Here we go. Okay. Awesome. Well, so welcome everybody to what if number three, this is number three of a hundred favorite, uh, my first 100 um, challenge 100 days. So we're here on day three and I can't wait. So what question we're trying to answer today is we are trying to figure out what if you only have two colors? Now this could be because you're brand new and you're starting out. It could be because you're in the airport traveling somewhere and this just happened to be in your purse and you want to paint. I'm not exactly sure why we only have two colors, but we only have two. So I decided to kind of choose for us and we're going to be using white and dark blue. Those will be our two colors and it's really fun. It's also fun sometimes to be able to do a design with only two colors, even if you have all of your colors there, but let's worry about that as we start. So first of all, I want to thank Alyssa um, so much for our what if question today. So thank you so much for that. I want to say uh, thank you to Melinda. Um, I really appreciate your support. Anybody that wants to support this project, there's a really easy way over on buy me a coffee link down below. You can definitely um, make this all possible and happen. So a little, little bit of help, a lot of bit of help, anything. Thank you so much. Okay. Next, um, Alicia, you asked a great question about if you don't have a one stroke. So I'm going to show a little baby bit of what I have to say about that. Maybe we'll do that as a whole what if coming up. Um, but if you don't have a one stroke that I do have an idea for you here, we'll be talking about. And then last but not least, rainbow one, two, three, here is your shout out, sweetie. Um, I love when kids have the chance and by kids, I mean, little people, like I love all of us. We are all great. But anytime, um, somebody under the age of 18 says, Hey, I want to do this too. I say you go. Yes, absolutely. I painted my first face in fifth grade. Um, and it's been something I've loved ever since. So let's get started with our two colors. I'm going to go ahead and share our screen. Um, with our other camera here real quick because I want to show you guys a few different things when you're dealing with a limit we want to understand um whoa there we go okay we want to understand how that changes our approach so often I don't know if you've ever had this experience but you'll be painting somewhere and somebody will come up and they won't see any of your work but they will see your palette and they'll say wow, you're a good artist. And you're like, how do you even know? Like, yeah, I have cool paint, but that, that has nothing to do with my artistry. Um, and so it's really nice to be able to show off some of our skills that aren't just the fact that we have cool paint. All right. So first of all, this will be familiar from our last um, class. And my blue is a little messy. We've got some green on it from you know, playing with leaves. Uh, but so I want to show you some things. As we look at two colors, here is our first color. We've got this nice dark blue. We can get so much from just these two colors. So here's our first one. Um, any color, if you're a watercolorist, you'll know this, you can dilute that color with just water and get a different version. So I'm dipping my brush in water and then drying it off. And then I'm painting again and look at what a different color that is. Dip it in the water, dry it off again. And here's another one, dip it in water, dry it off again. And here's another one. Now you might see this and you might be like, well, that doesn't look good. Okay, hold on a second. We're gonna do this in our design today and you're gonna be amazed at how much fun this is. Okay, but I can't, well, Let's go back. Okay, so that is if we dilute with water. Now, if we dilute with white, let me show you what happens there. So I've got my blue load back and now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna load some white onto that blue. And we come down here and there we go. It's still very thick, it's still very opaque. I dip it in water and then I load with white again. And here we go. You can see that this is a very similar um, change in the color, but it's a different texture of paint. Okay, so there we go. All of a sudden, we've only got two colors and we've got all of this, but let me show you what else we have. So under here, I've got black because it's hard to see white on white. So let's start with white now. And here is our white, nice. If we dip in water and dry off, here is our white. 
dip in water and dry it off. Here is our white. Okay, and you can see we can do the same thing. Dip in water, dry it off. There's our white. Okay, so we can do that, but we can also do the slowly mixing blue into our white. And you'll be like, well, we'll get the same colors. Actually, we won't. If we start with white and then we put on a little bit of blue, we will get a much lighter version um, because we've started. Look how light that is. It's so beautiful when you get just a little, when you do it on accident, not so much. When you have a dirty brush and you're trying to load white, I hate that. But when you're trying to get just these nuanced colors, it's awesome. So you can see we've got the whole range um, of color mixing that's going to happen as we go down. Okay, beautiful colors. Love it. Now, what are we going to do with those colors? So don't feel trapped like we only have two um, colors because we've got what, like eight now? <laughs> and this is monochrome painting. Um, we are dealing with black and white spectrum or white and whatever other color, or this could be blue and yellow or whatever. And then you can mix a green, like we can create new colors. All right, so next I wanna show you what happens when we try and paint with both colors at the same time. So this will be really familiar, um, this first one that we can do. So we can load up a petal brush with white, of course, you guys know where this is going. Um, get a nice creamy load, get the tip nice and blue, and you can see that we have this option here where we've got our nice little flower. Um, but you can do, hold on just a second, come back later. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're dealing with whatever I know. Um, and so we can do all kinds of super awesome things um, with the two colors here. Now, if we want to see something else, I want to show you guys something super cool. So here's my palette over here. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to pick up, this is a palette knife. You can see it's just got a handle and a blade. You can get these at like Michael's or Joann's or anywhere. Um, we're going to just pick up a little bit of white paint right there. So we're gonna take that paint, we're gonna come right over here and we're gonna drop it onto our blue. All right, and we're, I'm just kind of smashing it down a little bit. All right, now what I'm gonna do, and Alicia, this is for you. So I don't have a one stroke, but this will load like a one stroke. So your first load, you wanna be kind of careful to make sure that your color's there, but we've got that white spot. Now I'm just going to load my brush back and forth and you can see the white is getting all covered in blue, but I have a dark blue and a light blue now loaded on the same brush. And so I come over here and that's gonna work just like a one stroke. Um, and so this is another way that with just two colors of paint, I can have more options. And of course we can do fun shapes too. We're not trapped to just that. Okay. Awesome. So that kind of concludes our, what do we have with the colors? But I want to show you guys um, just a couple other techniques that we can use with when we are putting the colors together. So we can do a bunch of line work um, and have some fun with that. And we're going to um, do this in our design. So here um, we're going to have fun with a little decolletage today to really play with this. So the first thing that I wanna do is I want to go in, um, well, and let me show you just a couple things here on the black, cause it'll be easier to see the white there. So if we want to manipulate the paint once it's already in the picture, what does that look like? These are techniques that maybe are a little advanced, but it doesn't mean you can't try. It doesn't mean that we can't have fun with it. So we can do just our regular line work, right? We're so used to going in and having a lot of fun with that. And we'll definitely do some of that in our design, but we can do really fun things like smearing the paint and look what a cool um, effect that has. It's beautiful. I love it. We have these opportunities to have really exciting things happen in our work that we don't necessarily focus on because there's so much else we're trying to do. We're trying to get all the color right. We're trying to get all the lines right. We're trying to get all of these awesome things. And so if we come in here and we have this line of dots and then we bring in a dry brush or a damp brush, just one that doesn't have paint on it, and we slide those dots. Look how interesting that is. Um, if we had them in a circle, 
and we pulled all of those dots in, got to find a clean brush here. Um, we can get these really fun, like interesting little shapes that aren't the same um, as another typical shape. So we've got all of this awesome opportunity um, that we can do. One other thing I wanna show you guys um, is if we layer those two colors. So we've seen what happens when we mix them. We've seen what happens when we do um, them right next to each other. But what happens when we do one on top of the other? So this is one of my favorite things to do. I love it so, so much. Um, so if we have a beautiful dark blue line right there, and actually we can see blue on white. So let's come back over here. So we grab this blue and we have fun right here doing that blue stroke, right? Then we grab our white and we go right back on top of it. Now, if we go when it's still wet, it's going to turn light blue. And I don't really want that. But if we stay right inside that blue, look how pretty that is to just create this perfectly outlined, you know, whatever design we're doing. And you can see we've got a lot of opaque white there and then it's going really thin coming down. So it's, it's fun and it's amazing. And I absolutely love all of these opportunities to play um, with this new thing. Okay, I'm just taking a quick second to hop over and see what people are saying. Melinda, so glad you're here. Um, awesome. Thank you guys. Love that we've got some friends watching right with it live. So I'm just going to say hi all and we'll get right back. So now we get to actually paint something, right? Um, and this is the, the best part of these what ifs is when we get to actually kind of play with the design. So what I'm thinking here is we are going to have a whole lot of fun creating something beautiful and trying to create variety. So you think two colors, I'm limited. And I want you to see how really unlimited we are. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this um, damp, half inch brush and I'm going to side load it. And let me show you what that means. If I come over here to my dark blue and I load the side, you can do that a couple different ways. If you have, these are all really close together, so it's hard, but if you have an edge, you can load like this and you'll only get half of it loaded, which is awesome. But I'm going to actually rock onto the side a little bit and load. So this is giving me this edge over here that gets little to no paint on it. So I'm just coming here, loading back and forth, really nice. All right, I've got my side load. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create a one stroke effect, but with water on the other side. And I'm going to do a nice big circle right here. So I'm gonna just come in here and pull. And you can see it's a little bit darker on this edge than it is on the center. And that's giving me what I want. Okay, so we're gonna just wiggle in down, wiggle in down. And you can see we've just got kind of a fun variety there. And as I'm running out of that paint, cause you're not able to get as full of a load, you can see the effect even more. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over the first couple, wiggle and load. All right, now I also wanna have just a few of these petals coming up. So here we go in that direction and here we come over here. Now there have been some amazing one strokes that have been made that are, um, that do this on purpose with like white and silver to create this beautiful um, look. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love this. Okay, so what I wanna do next is I wanna do the same thing only I wanna do it with white. Um, and so I'm gonna get my angle brush and I'm gonna load up white and I'm gonna do this in two steps. So let me show you how I've got this going on. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to angle load the same shape and I'm gonna pull down the sides. Okay, now this has a really bright transition there and I don't want that. So instead of having the half load, because I have a full load, I can come with a damp brush and I can just wiggle on that or even pull, wiggle or pull, um, to fuzz out that transition. Um, and so let me do
do this again, only I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little further. So you want a nice wet paint to do this and we're gonna come on in. All right, so we're right here. We're pulling in the side of the petal and then we're doing our petal and then we're pulling it in. Okay, and you can see I've got that harsh transition right there. So I'm just gonna pull that in right there. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, perfect. So now I wanna do that over here. This is gonna be smaller. I wanna try and catch the insides because I don't want the skin necessarily showing. Okay, awesome. Beautiful, and then I'll pull in a couple over here as well. And I don't like things that are perfect. So since we have two, two, one, one over here, I'm gonna do three um, and just to create a little bit of variation. I find that when I do uh, things that are perfectly symmetrical, I end up being less happy with them because I could see all of the ways that it didn't work out exactly right. Okay, so now we've got our first layer done and I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, the next thing I wanna do though, is I want to do a really fun, um, drop down here. And so I'm going to show you guys um, what happens when we do an imperfect load. And this is really fun too. So this is all about these what ifs. Oh my gosh, this what if of two colors is how many different ways can we play with these two colors? So this is kind of like double loading um, the petal brush thing that I showed you guys, only I'm using a round brush. So I've got a nice full load of white on there that I'm going and I'm just getting blue on the tip. Now I've got super white, kind of white blue, and then more super blue down on the bottom. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come here and we're just gonna go thin to thick to thin to do a little almost leaf shape right here. So thin to thick to thin. And you can see that gives us a really fun color. There's a little bit of a white on the outer edge. And this is going to change the color as I go because the blue's being used. So it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's gonna be interesting to look at, which is what we're trying to create is we're trying to create this interest. Okay, so we have this group of five here. I'm going to now bend this next one around. There we go. So we've got a nice bent and we're gonna come here and we're gonna do a nice bent around. You can see we're getting wider and wider. And then I'm gonna come here on numbers um, if we count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm here on number three and number five, and I'm going to just bring down the side. And so it kind of points a little cup around there. And then I'm going to come here and do an echo curve going in that direction. And this is all just line work. And you guys know how much fun line work is, but you can see that by having an imperfect load of these two colors, this is like variegated and it's awesome. Now, anytime you're doing a decolletage, obviously we've got a cleavage mark right here and it's a little bit strange to have something sharp and pointy pointing down there. And so I really like to make sure it ends with a dot or it ends with a little teardrop going up. Um, just, this is personal preference, but I love for whatever is my lowest point to be nice and round. Um, but you can see like, this is beautiful. I love that. So we're going to add one more right here. Um, a nice little, uh, chunky teardrop there. And we'll add one more right here. And that's going to connect, like complete that shape. But you can see, we've just got this beautiful, thing going on. Okay. So there is that. Now, um, I want to do something similar on either end up here. We're creating a Y shape. Whenever you are trying to go and get a nice layout, one of the awesome things to know is that letters are beautiful. We see anything we see a lot. We love, like you think of the food that you ate growing up. And so you love it, even though people who try it for the first time are like, that is gross. Why would you eat a grilled cheese, peanut butter and cheese sandwich, you know, or something. Um, and you're like, oh, but it's the best. No, it really isn't the best. You just love it because you know it so well. So we know letters. So anytime you are trying to get something beautiful, if you use a letter, it really helps. So S's are beautiful, T's are beautiful, and this is a Y shape right here. 
So we can do something similar, but it doesn't have to be the same. But so here we go. We're going to just start. And when I do my line work, I never have a perfect idea of what's going to happen. I just get going and then I see kind of where it leads. So we had five down there. I'm kind of happy with the look of three. I'm going to do the little swirl on either side. Um, I'm going to be fine with it wisping off into nowhere, um, but I do want the little petal on either side down here. So way down. Okay, and then do you see how thin that is right there? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and lay down just some of these little petals right there to create a cluster um, that this is growing out of. And I know that that's a little bit hard to see on the camera. There we go. You can see that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay. Um, and as I can see, uh, this looks a little bare. So I'm going to add just a couple of those same lines right there on either side. Okay, perfect. Let's come over and do something similar on that side. So just as a review, we're loading up our white. I'm thinking to myself, okay, what other variation can I add? Um, so we'll do that here in a second, but let's get that little blue tip and let's go. Now we know that we can lay down our teardrops or we can um, line them up. Sometimes you can see that this side was really easy because I'm right-handed and this side's gonna be harder because I have to go up. If you don't like that, if you don't like having that sidedness, one of the things you can do is this way, we went from the inside out, we can go from the outside in. So we go, are thin, lay down thick and pull up thin line. So even if it's the same shape that you're creating over on this other side, you can do it going with the opposite direction if that's easier for your hand. Um, so never feel trapped, I guess is what I'm saying. If something's hard, it's probably hard for a reason and you can do what you gotta do to make it easy. Okay, so then we'll come here and we'll do our little teardrop, petal, teardrop, petal, lay one down there. And my white load is getting really um, thin there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just load white um, since on the other side, that's mostly what was there and come in and clean this up. So we'll just pull in these little white teardrops here and here, pull a couple in here and a couple in here. Okay, now we'll zoom back out and we'll take a look and we'll be like, okay, where are we at? All right, I'm loving this. We need leaves. I feel it in my heart. <laughs> and so let's use our one stroke trick where we just added a tiny little dot of the second color that we wanted on top and um, get some of that action going on here. So I'm just loading that up. Okay, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna add some beautiful things. Now, these petals are dark with light on the inside. So I'm going to reverse this so that the light is on the outside and that will help my leaves not look like petals. And we can put these leaves wherever we want them. So we're just looking for little areas that we feel like need a little bit more love. And we're sticking with our Y shape going to reload here just a little. So what we need to do so often is we vary with color and that's where we get our variation. And so here you can see we're getting our variation from technique and from shape and that's letting us do such awesome things. So don't ever feel trapped, like use the freedom that you have to be like, you know what? I'm really not enjoying this design or that design. And all that means is that it, there's an opportunity for growth. There's an opportunity for change. Okay. Now we've got white, we've got blue, we've got the middle tones. It's all beautiful. This doesn't feel finished to me yet. So what we're going to do is we are going to use single colors in all of their power and have fun with line work to finish this up. So this is, as you guys know, my favorite part of a design. I just love having a ball with it. So we're going to start with our blue. And sometimes it's nice to give different colors um, kind of limits 
So it doesn't feel crazy. It doesn't feel like everything is everywhere and it's a mess. So I'm going to limit my blue line work to short strokes. I'm not going to let it go crazy. Um, we'll save that for the white, um, but we're going to do some short strokes here. So you can go back over anything that you want there to be more crisp detail work. So if we're like, okay, I want this to be nice and crisp. Um, look how beautiful that is. So you can have fun um, adding in that. And that just gives us a little bit more definition, I guess, is one of the things that we're getting here. Um, it also lets us clean up any little edges. I love thinking of my um, my line work is like ground duty at recess, um, how they're like, no, get off the fence. Don't do that. You know, and sure, they're going to do it anyway, but at least somebody gets to feel like they weren't making that up. This is also giving us um, definition between the leaves and the petals, which is really nice. So we'll just finish up with that. So I hope you guys that this what if has given you, um, yeah, just curiosity. I hope you're asking yourself questions. I'm, I'm hoping you're like, oh, but what if we did this or that, you know? Um, okay. Now everything has been very much in this why orderly direction. And while I applaud that, I'm going to come right here actually. And we're going to add a little starburst in blue right in the center of our flower. Ooh, yes, that was a good choice. Okay. So now I want there to be a little bit more bend. We've got a little organic bend here, but it's pretty or ordered. So I'm just going to come and add a couple little curves. And these can be like full circle curves or just curls. Um, there we go. One here, one there, one here. Oh, okay. Keep them small. That was, that was the boundary I gave myself. So. Um, this is one of my favorite shapes, by the way. It's where you go out and then you come back in. It's almost like a whip shape, kind of. Um, I think it's so beautiful. And crossing over is really pretty. You just want to make sure that nothing is too repetitive. So we've got a double there and a double there. So maybe in between them, let's just tuck a little single. And that just is something that I watch for, um, that our hands and our brains love repetitive motion. And so whenever we find that we're repeating ourselves too much um, in a design like this, uh, it's nice to add just that little variation. Okay, so we've got some major gorgeousness happening here. Um, I'm gonna switch to white and finish up our wonderful, lovely design. All right, and I'm gonna just add a couple more dark ones. There we go. So don't forget your step back moment and, and look and see. This is also a really fun technique when you're painting with two colors if the person is wearing just two colors. So if this woman had on a beautiful navy gown or something and you're at a gala, oh my gosh, how much fun to um, create a lace look or something that is just using those simple color palette. All right. So we've definitely got dot options. Um, remember, oh, okay. This is way too fun. Um, remember that we can do dots anywhere. Um, we can just scatter them or we can have them be controlled. I, I love dots as like their own thing. Okay, now one of the things I want to do is remember how we did on top of work. So from here, we're going to go through each of these petals and we're going to just lay down um, one of these shapes. So it's mirroring this shape here. So we're doing the longest one in the middle and then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And it just gives us this beautiful um, star shape in the flower. Pull it up again. So center long, smaller, 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 smaller. And we're trying to keep um, the blue in between. We don't want these petals to be so close together that you lose that little channel. So that's just kind of a goal to 
shoot for as you do these. Um, but this is fun. This is where we're playing and we're just experimenting. How, how do we like this? Now we've got these growing out of the white already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop back to my blue brush and I want it to be, I don't want it to be super wet. So I loaded it with blue. I've got a really good load and then I wiped it off. So there's not a lot there. And then I'm just going to come in and trace these inner petals and give them the boundary that they need. And then what we can do from here is we can even just pull, I'm just doing little lines. I'm not trying to outline anything. I'm not trying to go in between anything. I'm just doing little flicky lines all the way around. So maybe this is too much. Maybe you're like, I loved it 10 minutes ago <laughs> or whatever, but you can totally just see that the what if sessions are where we get to just see where does this go? Okay. So now we've got that really complete centerpiece. Um, I want to throw just a couple little um, teardrop shapes in mingling out here so that that center petal doesn't look so that these petals look like they came from the same flower. So we just need a few of those little tucked in here. And then are you guys ready for my favorite part? Okay, I've got a little bit of the blue too that we want to just trace around. Okay, awesome. All right, now I just want to let my white go crazy a little bit. And this is going to be a awesome way to make the design a little bigger to help it not feel so tight right now I feel like the design is a little bit on the tight side um and so something's gotta escape and get away so we're just gonna start right here do a couple dots and then a nice big long swirl now this swirl is going on top a little bit um and a nice just wisp right here. I think of Elsa when I do this kind of stuff um, with her, let it go. And that's really what I'm trying to do. So you can see now, because we've crossed on top of things, we're, we're not following the rules. Um, it just, it loosens everything up and, and makes it beautiful. If you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. I'll mess it up. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to add a mess. So I do have a class all about painting a mess um, that you should check out if that's something that you struggle with. Um, but this is just so much fun. Remember, we like our circles. Um, we're creating uh, just something so fun. Thin to thick to thin. We don't want these lines to get too thick. So I like that one, but I'm not going to do a lot of those because this is my little wispy freedom. And as soon as something gets heavy, it's really hard to keep it looking free. Um, but we can do another circle there, a circle here. Um, let's bring a little twisty out and around. Oh my gosh, look how fun this is, you guys. I love it. Okay, then we're coming over here and thin to thick to thin, a little wisp out and back. And if you find that it doesn't look good, it just means you're not done yet. Keep going, discover new things and feel free, you guys, always to be true to yourself and your style. So before we added this last layer of white, um, this wasn't quite true to myself. I love the chaos and the mess of this, you know, the breathing that happens um, with, with these little lines. If that isn't you, then don't do it, you know, stay there at the beauty. Um, when you are an artist and you're trying to share something inside of you, if you're trying to share something that's not inside of you, it's going to be really hard to do. Um, and that's just some strong feelings I have, as you can tell. Um, so make sure when you're sharing your insides that you share what's inside. Okay. Um, I'm just adding a few more little dots to break up some of that really dark blue. Um, and you can see nobody would look at this design and say, oh, you only had two colors. No, 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 there's way more than two. Um, or they might say, ooh, I love how you only used blue and white, that there aren't all of those colors. Now, who would ever go to a rainbow and say, ugh, 
why are there so many colors? Like that isn't how we feel, but sometimes we get so used to painting a certain way that we think more that way is better and more that way is better. And it's really sad because, um, it's so beautiful to have other opportunities and to let other things feel, feel free and to, um, really enjoy that freedom. Okay. So what do you guys think? Are you going to paint with just the color? The one behind me, you can see just black and white. That's all that's on this board. And still it's absolutely gorgeous. So feel free, be bold, have so much fun. I loved this. What if challenge I, um, loved like this specific one, number three. So what if you only have two colors? Well, then you only paint with two colors, but you make it beautiful and awesome. It's so good to spend time with you guys. Um, I can't wait to see what we get to do next. Have a great day. Bye.